Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hobby Room. My name is Alex. This is my midlife crisis. I hope you all had a great holiday and that you're doing well in the new year, uh, that you didn't make too many uh, unattainable resolutions or goals for this year. Uh, I personally had a very productive last couple of months. Uh, none of that, <laughs> none of that was in the hobby room, but it was still very productive and I'm pretty happy about it. I'm also very excited to get back into the hobby room, get back uh, working on the layout and to bring you this year's first project. Now, what I did is I made dun, 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 this end of train device. Uh, sometimes it's called an EOD, sometimes it's called an EOT. Sometimes it's called a Fred flashing rear end device, which seems very um, tongue in cheek. The only thing I know about it is that they started using them in the mid 60s. No, sorry, toward the late 60s. And I believe, I believe that the first train that used it, the first railroad that used it was in Florida. Uh, that is some useless trivia information for you to ponder while I show you how I made this one. All right, let's start off with the parts that you will need for this. Uh, obviously you need a box car. You can do this in something that's not a box car, but box cars are obviously a lot uh, easier to do than non-box cars. I've decided to go with a uh, pegboard here and uh, I think it will help me lay the components out a little bit easier and the components that you need are your flashing IC. So this is uh, readily available, it's a 3909. Uh, battery holder for N sized battery, for N scale flasher. Capacitor, uh, this is a 220 microfarad capacitor which I believe will give us a flash rate of about two per second. A switch. This is a very simple on-off switch. It is very tiny. And of course, an LED. Uh, this one was pre-wired. The first time I made one of these, I just basically glued everything to the platform. But I thought it would be more professional if I used one of these little perforated boards. Problem with that is the perforated board is too large to fit there and too large to fit there. So if I go on one side here, you can see that it is too deep for the car. So I need to make it smaller or use something else. Now to make it smaller is actually pretty easy. These things are not, you know, made out of really anything spectacular. I just get a pair of nippers and And little pieces of board go everywhere. And yeah, I see I've got my safety reading glasses on. And basically I'm trimming off about a quarter of an inch, four millimeters of this thing, and now it'll fit quite nicely on there. Still not sure exactly how I'm going to mount that, so we'll put our uh, IC cradle. Now this is a bit of an indulgence, you don't absolutely have to have a cradle. You could very easily just put your uh, IC directly into the board and solder directly to your IC. But you know, there's always this outside possibility that the IC will go bad and in that case it would be easy, it would be nice if you could have it be removable. I'm gonna put something on each side here so that this will sit approximately an eighth of an inch or uh, three millimeters above the uh, base. The on off switch is gonna be positioned so that when the door is open that will present itself right at the door opening. I won't have to pick the car up to turn it on and off. I'll open the door, flip the switch, and then close the door. This is gonna be a 1.5 
volt circuit. You can make these out of anything. Um, if you're doing something in a larger scale, if you're doing HO or O scale, you can actually purchase a board that's already with it, already has the LED attached, and all you have to do is put a battery on it. But uh, I haven't been able to find anything that is uh, small enough to fit inside of an N scale car. So let's see if I position that there. As you can see, the switch is right there at the door opening. And that gives me room to put my battery holder right there and put my capacitor right there. Now this battery holder came with much longer leads. I cut them down and stripped them back as far as they would go so that the battery holder would fit more better onto my little piece of board. Good news, everyone. Well, there's good news. So basically what I am going to do now is I am going to solder all of these little components in place. Make our circuit by wiring, uh, by putting jumpers in between the things that need jumpers. My camera died during that. so. You missed this amazing, beautiful soldering job. Next thing I want to do is I want to mount this LED on the box cover. So I need a little hole for the LED to go into. And I know what you're thinking. And the answer is yes, I do have a bigger drill motor. I just don't want to go downstairs and get it right now. And there we go. Little tiny hole. in here it is slightly higher than I had wanted it to be uh, but I think that will be fine and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a dollop of hot glue on the inside to hold this in place all right so the hot glue did not work out quite the way that I thought it would. So I'm gonna see if I can still, so what I'm worried about is if I cut enough of this away so that we can't see the hot glue mess, that there won't be enough adhesive to hold the LED in place. seems to be working. So let's go with that. I may come back in here and clean this up later. Or I may just get obsessed and do it now. One of these has a darker tinge to it. That one is going to go to our negative. So we need to put our switch on, which will also require some hot glue. Alright, so you can't really see it on here, but uh, basically what I did is I put a drop of CA glue there to hold this little switch in place while I do all of the stuff. But before I do the stuff, I'm going to test it and make sure that it's still 
does what I want it to do. I go here. I have my continuity. I go here. I don't have my continuity. So. Our switch is still working, which is what we want. All right, so make sure we don't have anything. Sometimes you, sometimes you may, you, if you're doing that, you can heat up the insulation and melt it to another tap. So we don't need to do that. Why are you not cooperating? Operate wire. Why is so mean to me? Oh, you did solder, you just broke. Okay, that's fine. We can work with that. This is going to be tough. Right. All right, so I'm going <clears> to <throat> look at all of these joints and gaps. which way it's supposed to go. So we're going to try... Alright, so I don't know if you can tell, but one of these wires has a dark spot on it. And I think that should go to the negative side. So...
and that <coughs> is the hard part. Now, I need to mount this in here. And then put this on. Plenty of room. All right, so to mount this, Just going to start with some double sided tape and we'll see how that goes. Alright, let's see what I did wrong. Oops. Did I, pull, I probably pulled something loose while I was moving all this stuff around. So. There we go. Not sure what went wrong the other time, but do not need coupler on this end because this is the end of the train so I'm going to find a set of trucks that does not have a knuckle coupler on it put them on there Wow, that took me a little bit longer than I thought it was gonna take me, primarily because I, I haven't soldered on a tiny scale like that in a long time. So it took me a little while to get back into the swing of it. But once I got in there, everything went smoothly. Here is a copy of the schematic that I used for this. If you want your EOT to flash more slowly, you should use a larger capacitor. If you want it to flash more quickly, you should use a smaller capacitor. I hope that you either learn how to do something or how to not do something. Either one is a benefit. And if you would like to watch me do stuff like this in the future or watch me struggle to do stuff like this in the future, please hit the notification. No, you have to hit the bell. No, wait, you have to do subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Sub it's over there. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and then you can do that. Until uh, next time, here's a train running around my layout. <laughs>